Hello friends, this video on motion and measurement of distance part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now, when we discuss about motion, there are many different types of motion that exist. So, one common type of motion is rectilinear motion, which is also termed as linear motion. So, this is about motion along a straight line. When an object moves along a straight line, as you can see here, this car is moving along a straight path. So, when a car is moving on a highway, that is a straight path, there are no turns. So, that is rectilinear motion or often also known as linear motion. Linear means something which lies on the same line. Other type of motion is circular motion. So when an object moves along a circular path, right? So just think of this example, the most common example that you can think of. Take a stone, tie it to a thread and hold the thread in your hand like this. And then you start spinning it. So as you give it some force, you will see that it starts moving in a circular path so in this path it will start moving like this so when you if you look at this movement of the thread from the top so the top view would be something like this so you see it is moving in a circular path so this is this type of motion is known as circular motion now can you think of some examples where you see objects are moving in circular path some common examples from your day-to-day -day life Okay, let me tell you some examples. The movement of the blades of your fan, that is in a circular path. So this is how the blades move. So this is a circular path. So that's an example of circular motion. Think of the movement of your the hands of the clock. So that also moves in a circular path. So you see, there are so many objects around us where we see different types of motion. You can see rectilinear motion, you can see circular motion around yourself. So it is not necessary that you need to search your textbooks for examples. You just start observing things around you and you will see objects in circular motion. You will find objects in rectilinear motion and you will be able to relate science with objects surrounding you. Now, there is another type of motion called periodic motion. Now this is interesting. What is periodic motion? So it is a type of motion where which would repeat itself at periodic intervals of time. So think of a pendulum clock. So I'm not sure if all of you have a pendulum clock at your home or not, but I'm very much sure that you would have seen a pendulum somewhere or the other. So how does the pendulum moves? So the pendulum moves somewhat like this. This is how the pattern of the motion is. So do you notice something that the same type of motion is being repeated again and again. So this ball kind of a structure which is there, it comes here, goes there, comes back here. Again it repeats the same thing, comes here, goes there, comes back here. Again the same thing. So basically the same pattern of motion is being repeated in periodic intervals of time, in equal intervals of time. So that is why this type of motion is called periodic motion. So it repeats itself in periodic intervals of time. So to complete this one more movement, it takes the same amount of time every time. So that is why it is called periodic motion. When the motion of the pendulum is the best example for periodic motion. However, you can relate to a lot of things around you where periodic motion takes place. So let's think of a swing. So if you go to a children's park where you have a swing, what happens? If you put a little force to it, after that it, it keeps moving on its own. And that is a periodic motion because it keeps repeating the same pattern of motion. So that's an example of periodic motion. So this type of motion is also known as oscillatory motion. So one, this complete movement, I mean one pattern which is actually getting repeated over and again. So that one pattern is often termed as one oscillation. So you will learn more details about oscillatory motion in your higher classes. So for now you should just know what kind of motion is periodic motion. Now let's look at some examples of periodic motion. So look at a lot of musical instruments and you will be able to see periodic motion in a lot of them. Think of a guitar. So as soon as you pull the string of a guitar, what happens? The string starts vibrating. So just try it out. If, if you have a guitar, guitar around you, so just pull a string of the guitar and leave it and you will see that the string will like kind of vibrate like this. So that motion is nothing but periodic motion. 
Think of the school bell or the Christmas bell. So as soon as you struck it on one end, it keeps moving like this. So that's a periodic motion. Take a rubber band, stretch it and then just move it, pluck it in, the, in between. Just move it in between. What happens? It starts vibrating in this fashion. So that is again periodic motion. In fact, a lot of musical instruments exhibit periodic motion like the, the tabla, the dholak. So these are all different types of instruments where you can actually experience periodic motion in the form of vibration because vibration is nothing but periodic motion. In that case, also the movement happens like this. The flute. So these are all different uh, examples which exhibit periodic motion. Now let us look at some special type of motions. Have you ever observed the motion of a spinning top? So you take a top, just move it and you see it keeps moving like this on the ground. So what kind of motion is this? So here the object is not moving along a straight line. So it is not linear motion. The object is also not moving in a circular path. So it is not circular motion. So what the object is doing? The object is actually rotating about itself. So basically it exhibits rotational motion because the object is rotating around itself, I mean around an axis within it. So it has rotational motion, but at the same time, if you observe it once again, it is also moving from one point to another. So there is some translatory motion as well. So it has a combination of translatory motion plus rotational motion. So translatory motion means when the object moves from one point to another. So here the object is moving from one point to another plus the object is also rotating within itself. So in a lot of cases where motion is not just one type of motion, it can be a combination of many different types of motion. So those kind of complicated motion also exists around us. Think of a ball which is moving down the slope. Now the ball might move like this. So basically what type of motion is this? So ball is moving along a straight path you might say, but in this case the ball is actually rolling. You, you just saw right how the ball rolled. So let's look at it once again. You see the ball just rolled around it. So this type of motion is termed as rolling motion because you know the ball is kind of rolling over it. Now sometimes the ball rolls at the same time it slips as well. So that time we we'll say that the ball is rolling with sleeping. So these are like many different types of motion. Now these are quite complicated forms of motion and you will learn about them when you are in your class 11th. So till then you should just have an idea that okay when we talk about motion that motion can be of any type. It can be simple linear motion or it can be a circular motion or it can be some complex Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.